my name is Steve Scott from Parker Hannafin. Um, Parker is a, a large global manufacturing operation. Um, we manufacture various industrial equipment in various locations around the world in various, um, various operations based on technology. Um, the operation that I work for is the filtration group. Filtration is, as far as um, our group is concerned, meaning um, filtration, drying, separation of, of gases and compressed air. Alternative energies, which is my, um, the market that I'm responsible for, is looking at um, things such as compressed natural gas and non-conventional gases, such as biogas. The reason we've been asked to be included um, in this session on the CHP efficiency is because it is also very important when selecting a CHP to select efficient cooling equipment to remove water. Because if you do that, you can actually improve the performance of the engine, improve the output, and also improve the service life. So if we look at a typical kind of application for the gas composition, obviously depending on what kind of application this is. Um, at the top we have the methane, which is what we are interested in, what is uh, actually burning in the engine. Um, then we may have things such as CO2, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, which generally doesn't cause a problem for the engine. Um, it's just really taking up space that, uh, that could otherwise be uh, methane or to produce energy. Then we have things such as hydrogen sulfide, which does cause a problem. Uh, it's very corrosive and it's a poisonous gas and it's desirable to remove that, usually to less than 100 ppm. Different uh, engines have different specs for that. Uh, depending on the application, there can be siloxins in the gas. Uh, and again, it's uh, very important to remove them. They cause a big problem in, in engines, so as much of those can be removed as possible. Other things such as um, VOCs, again, desirable to remove because if not, they can get into the atmosphere. And of course, water. Depending on the temperature of the gas, um, it's usually saturated, so it can be about 6 or 7% of the gas composition is actually water vapour. So doing an example, taking um, gas at 40 degrees, saturated, just a typical kind of gas composition, but you see at the bottom where we talk about H2O or water, at, the, at those conditions you'd have about 6% of the gas is actually water vapour. Now if you cool that down to a low dew point, about 3 or 4 degrees, you actually drop from 6% to around about 1%. So that means that all the other constituents in the gas are increased. So the methane content would probably increase by about 5% just by removing the water. Now obviously depending on how the engine is converting and the, the feed-in tariffs, an extra 5%, for example, on a, a tariff of, uh, of 10p per kilowatt hour, could raise an extra 42,000 pounds a year, which is quite a substantial amount. Second reason for, for drying the, the biogas is that if the water condenses out, if the gas cools, then this water, it isn't just water, it's going to mix with the other constituents in the gas. So for example, it'll mix with sulfur and produce sulfuric acid. It'll mix with the CO2 and produce carbonic acid. So you end up this, with this very acidic condensate, which can cause problems with any, especially metals such as valves, receivers, and of course in the engine itself. Also by cooling the gas, you can remove some of the contaminants because some of these contaminants are actually soluble in water. For example, if you cool to a low dew point, you can remove around about 250 ppm of hydrogen sulfide, approximately 20% of siloxins and hydrocarbons, and pretty much all of the ammonia, which is very soluble in water. And also, by taking water out of the gas, it reduces the contamination of engine oil. Um, we got some numbers from a, an engine manufacturer, a one megawatt engine containing about 600 litres of oil, changed every 1600 hours and costing about um, five pounds or five euros per kilogram. If it's not adequately treated and dried, the gas, then it can increase the service life, so it can double it. So that could actually cost 
especially in terms of engine downtime and, and not actually producing green electricity, it can cost around £15,000 a year in, in total maintenance costs. And also, mentioning that we can remove, for example, some um, hydrogen sulphide, if you're using a, an adsorbent-based system such as activated carbon, then if you're able to pre-remove some of the H2S, then if you have an existing activated carbon system, it will last longer and increase the service life. For example, on a 700 cubic meter system, if you have 500 ppm of hydrogen sulphide, we calculate that it's probably costing you in the region of 40,000 a year for activated carbon to, uh, to service, to remove that. Of course, if you can remove 250 ppm of H2S by cooling the gas, then basically you can half your cost, so the, the activated carbon will last longer and you can save 20,000 a year. And the last uh, major reason is that it, it complies with what the uh, engine manufacturers are saying. Um, have a copy of the, the Yenbacker technical instruction, which says no condensate in the components that come in contact with the gas mixture. And also, if you're using a carbon-based system, you should have a relative humidity of less than 50%. So basically, you need to dry the, the gas to, to co comply with that. And Caterpillar also say, saturated fuel is acceptable, but water condensation in the fuel lines or the engine is not acceptable. So again, to stop that happening, it's necessary to dry the gas. This shows a typical arrangement. So you can see the cooling system before a blower. Um, there's a few advantages of that, but probably the main advantage is that you're actually protecting the blower also from water. But you can see that going in, um, the gas is at 35 degrees, containing 47 grams of water with a relative humidity of 100%. If you cool that down to 5 degrees, you drop down to 7 grams of water. So if we look at that um, over a day, 700 cubic meters, um, in each cubic meter, 47 grams of water times 24 hours. That's 790 kilograms of water every day, or almost a ton of water, which if it's not cooled or dried, is going through into the engine. So by cooling to a five degree dew point, we can reduce that down to 118 kilograms, or actually remove 672 kilograms of water every day. That quickly shows uh, what it actually looks like in operation. Uh, on the inlet, we have uh, a filter followed by the cooler and the cyclonic separator to, to separate out the water. In the background is a, a water chiller, providing chilled water to, to cool the gas, and then it is going to the engine. So to summarize, um, even on a tariff of, of 10p per kilowatt hour, if we take into account the extra revenue from the engine, the saving in, um, in carbon for H2S removal, the oil change, and we reduce the cost, obviously, of operating the, uh, the chiller in the, the cooling system. You can save around about £68,000 a year by cooling the gas. Probably, actually, less than the investment in, in a cooling system in the first place. So, a very good investment. That completes the presentation. Um, if anybody's interested, we have a white paper which kind of puts a little bit more detail in this information, which one of my colleagues have. So, at the end, if you want this, uh, please help yourself. Thank you very much.